Hello, third graders. Today I want to teach you about the largest tribe of Native Americans that lives here in Sonoma County, which is the Pomo tribe. The Pomo tribe is an important part of our community. But today I want to teach you about how the Pomo people lived in the past, before settlers came to this area from other places. So we're going to learn how they lived in the past. And this was before there were telephones or computers or cars or grocery stores or Walmart. Uh, during this time, people needed to get everything from nature that would help them survive and be happy. So we're going to learn about that now. Let's start by talking about food. The Pomo people in this area mostly gathered food. They mostly gathered plants from the land and forests around them. So they would eat seeds, nuts, and berries. I bet you've gone berry picking before in Sonoma County. And the most important thing they gathered was acorns. I'm going to underline that because that's very important. Acor acorns were the most important part of their diet. And they were gathered from oak trees, most important. Now, Pomo people also hunted and fished. So they did eat animals as well. They got fish from the Russian River, like steelhead salmon, as well as other fish in local waterways. They also got things to eat from the coast, like shellfish and even seals. The Pomo people also hunted. They hunted for mammals, like deer, rabbits and squirrels. So they had a very healthy diet and ate food that they could find right here in Sonoma County. Let's talk about their shelter. Shelter is where you live. It's what protects you from the weather and the rain and the heat. It's your home. Pomo people built a shelter called a wikiup. And there's actually a neighborhood in Santa Rosa called wikiup. It's named after this Pomo kind of building. It was made out of wooden poles and dried grass. And it had mud or redwood bark covering the outside. The wikiup was circular, so it was round. It was a circular structure. It was one room and one doorway. So everybody would sleep in the same round room inside of this wikiup, and there was one door in and out. And it was stationary, meaning it's, once they built it, it stayed there. It was not the kind of home that people would pick up and move. All right, let's talk about the Pomo government and population. How was their community and their society organized? Well, the first thing we need to know is their territory. The territory is the area that they inhabited at this time. Their territory ranged down what we now call the Sonoma Coast and then east to Clear Lake. So if you've ever been to that large lake called Clear Lake, Pomo people were living there many hundreds of years ago and still do. 
in the year 1700, which again is right before people from other countries and other places in the world started coming to this area. Before that time, it's estimated that the population or number of people that were living in this Pomo tribe was about 8,000 people. That's the estimate of how many Pomo people were living in this area at that time. And the people lived in villages and a community was made up of several villages. And the leader of the Pomo tribe or village was the head man. And he lived in the main village. Kind of the largest village was where their government resided. Let's talk about tools and clothing, but first I'd like to draw a young Pomo girl, and we'll talk about what she is wearing and what she is holding. There are her long hair. So uh, across her shoulders and top half of her body, she is wearing a cape. The cape would have been made out of deer skin or some kind of other deer um, animal skin and it was tied around her shoulders. Okay, and then on the bottom she would have been wearing a long ankle skirt, meaning it went down to her ankles. And this skirt was actually made out of shredded redwood bark. If you've ever been to see a redwood tree and you felt the bark covering the outside, you know it's really soft kind of and very thick. And so it could be used for many things and it could actually make a comfortable skirt for the women to wear. Let's talk about, I'm going to draw her holding a basket. And Pomo people are famous all over the world for their beautiful woven baskets. They make some of the most beautiful baskets in the whole world. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about their baskets in just a moment, but that would be important because they use baskets for many different purposes. So let's talk a little bit more about clothing and tools. clothing and tools. All right, let's talk about the women because the clothes that the women wore were different from what the men wore. Women wore low ankle skirts, just like I showed you in the drawing. Low ankle skirts and capes to keep them warm when the temperature was lower in the winter time. Low ankle skirts and capes. I'll zoom in a little bit here. There we go. The men, on the other hand, oftentimes, especially in the warmer months, wore loincloths. Loincloths are um, like square pieces of fabric or material that you use to cover your front and your back side. Um, or sometimes they wore nothing at all. You can imagine on a hot summer day, it might be comfortable not to wear any clothes. The clothing was made of natural materials that could be found here in our environment of Sonoma County. They could be made out of tule reeds, redwood bark, as we talked about, the skirt was made out of redwood bark, and deer skin or other animal skin could be used to make the clothing that they wore. They had to use what was available. They could not go to the mall. There was no mall. Now let's talk about tools. The most important tool, again, what Pomo people are famous for is baskets. So they used willow branches and sedge roots 
to make their baskets, to weave them together. Uh, willow branches are very flexible and can be um, curved and rounded to make the shape of a, of a basket. And sedge roots are very long and sturdy and strong and they can be woven into the branches to hold the basket together. They also decorated the basket sometimes if they were for gifts or for ceremonies and they might decorate them with feathers or shells. They would be very beautiful if they were gift baskets. So what did they use these baskets for? Well, they used them for gathering food, like acorns, like seaweed, gathering and then also storing their food for long periods of time. They used them as gifts to give to other villages or other tribes. And they use them to carry their babies in on their backs. They would make these um, baby shaped baskets that could hold a baby wrapped up inside there. Let's talk about, as we remember from our food category, that Pomo people did do hunting and fishing. So let's talk about some of the tools they used for that. Let's talk about their hunting tools. So they would make snares. Snares is when you have like a long rope with a loop and when the animal steps into the loop, it pulls tight around their leg and they cannot get away. They would make nets for catching fish in rivers and in the ocean. They would make spears, probably what they would need, spears or bows and arrows for killing deer. And those are some of the tools that Pomo people made during that time. Finally, let's talk about the economy. An economy is how we get what we need and how we um, maybe trade or pay for what we need. Um, in our economy now, people have jobs and they get paid for doing their jobs and then they use that money to buy what they need, maybe at Target or Walmart or we pay rent. Um, during this time, Pomo people would gather what they need, but sometimes they would have more than enough. And so they would have trade feasts. And during trade feasts, they would share extra food. If they had more food than they needed for their village, they could share their extra food and then they could trade it for things that they wanted from other tribes or other regions, things they could not get um, in this area. So they might trade for different kinds of food, for animal skins, for beautiful feathers, and also sometimes for arrowheads. Now, the Pummel people also had their own money system. They were very good counters, and they had a really great system for um, trading using money. So what they used for money was beads made out of clam shells or magnesite. Uh, magnesite is a kind of rock and so they would make those into beads and string them on rope and then they could use that as money. I'm going to put a little dollar sign so we know that was used as money. And that is how the Pomo people in the Pomo tribe right here in what we call Sonoma County, that is how they lived in the past.